Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, today we are doing the set reviews. Uh, we are uh, today's episode is going to cover all the water cards. Now, Rebellion's Call is finally out. We've had pre-release. We've seen a lot of stuff. Uh, this set is is absolutely great. Um, I think uh, the diversity pool of the decks and the meta is going to change drastically. Um, I think a lot of complaints have been answered in this set. And we're going to address those as we go on uh, for each of these colors. But I uh, wanted to start off with water because of the, the cover card is water. So, uh, you know, we're going to get into the menu and the rest of the cool cards here. Uh, but yeah, without further ado, let's get started. We have the Blue Mage. Now, uh, two cost standard unit forward. Choose a forward in your opponent's break zone. Remove it from the game. Blue Mage's power becomes the same as the forward's power until the end of the turn. You can only use this ability once per turn. So, um, going to what I, what I kind of just started with, that uh, a lot of issues are being addressed in this set. Uh, the main one is that every color now has, uh, you know, removal from the break zone. And, and it's, it's very, very refreshing, actually. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, the, that's all I could say there. Now, Blue Mage, all in all, is a fantastic card. Um, very cheap, very useful, can kind of... Uh, you know trick your opponent into a lot of setups like uh, overextending or like causing things it adds another layer of depth to water uh, in sealed and in um, or drafting or whatever anything really this card is also very good um, I see this card being played of as a two of like the way we played Diana in lightning or the white mages in in wind uh, this might be a two or a three of uh, at some point but like uh, it's just a very good card. Uh, other things to note that it is FFTA2, and there's a lot of FFTA2 support coming through too, as well. So, uh, very strong card, very good way to start off these things. Uh, Alpha Nod, uh, Science of the Seventh Dawn, 14, 7k forward. When Alpha Nod enters the field, draw two cards and then discard one. At five damage, uh, enters, when he enters the field, choose a forward of cost four or less, uh, other than card name Alpha Nod in your break zone and play it onto the field. Uh, yeah, uh, just if you guys have been with me for a while, you know that we were playing Scions last uh, towards the end of the last set. Um, this is going to be a great addition to that deck um, on its own and in sealed. Uh, is it's a very strong card. Um, it's a little under curve, but the effects will uh, definitely make up for it. You play three, so you can kind of hold one or two towards the end of the game when you're living at five damage. But uh, very good, <laughs> it has uh, a lot of potential, I think. So. Um, I approve of this one as well. Uh, Andoria. I think it's interesting that we're getting more water typo stuff, and this is kind of what I was also wanted to like address. I think this set overall, and I'll say this probably, you'll hear me say this a lot throughout the other reviews as well, but um, everything got support. Typo, uh, <laughs> what's the word, avalanche, and, and a bunch of other weird things, like things that we didn't see play, like 4 got a lot of support. Uh, aside from the starter deck that they just got, we got new cards for it. They finally got their searcher, uh, samurais, uh, and then again, like everything got like a buff because of the, the removal, the breaks on removal. But uh, yeah, Andoria, four drop back up. When Andoria enters the field, choose a forward. If you control two or more forwards, put uh, uh, if you control two or more forwards, put it at the bottom of its owner's deck. So not bad. Um, I think we still play the other Andoria. In realistically, I would care about this queen if we had if Princess Sarah searched queens as well, but she doesn't. So. Uh, for now, this is like, uh, this can sit tight for a bit. It's not the worst card. Um, it's definitely helpful in sealed, more helpful in sealed than in, you know, drafting and limited. I think we just can just call that limited format, right? Um, uh, it's not bad when you're ahead. It's a, just a win more card kind of thing. Um, but yeah, so I don't think we'll see too much in competitive and standard, but limited, definitely good. Uh, Kuchulain, uh summons, choose a forward at the beginning of your next turn. At the beginning of the next main phase one, put it into the break zone. So, a uh, very interesting card. Uh, this set, we only got one summon, one monster, I believe, for each color. So, something to, to point out is that um, this is probably one of the stronger ones. Um, it has a few drawbacks. Uh, I'm going to elaborate on some of these, right? Because uh, as a water player, I, I really like uh, get into these. So, uh, hitting this on, e on an EX burst is good. Um, is probably your favorite thing you want to do right because your opponent is attacking you're going to remove something at the start of your main phase one right so automatically you're removing an obstacle from you to attack so forcing your opponent to either 
uh, ex like use extra CP to like deploy more forwards or um, you know something of that nature right you don't want to do it at the somewhere around your turn because um, because then at the start of their turn they can effectively just play another copy of whatever card you chose to put into the break zone um, obviously it's not breaking something as well right so you can you go through a lot of stuff like the um, what you call it the soirees and things that can't be broken um, or d things that don't take damage right or so this is goes through a lot of hoops um, it's really just timing for this card uh, I think it's it's a great EX burst all considered um, it's a very strong summon I think I'm pretty sure this is gonna see a lot of play uh, yeah I, it just makes me think of the Kuchulin from Final Fantasy Tactics as well too can we please get that card in here please I need all of those tactics uh, like evil people <laughs> um, Quad of, uh, we saw this in the spoilers. Uh, when Quad of enters the field, your opponent selects a forward of cost two or less, they control, put it to, into the break zone. Um, I love how water is getting more of that, that it just puts things into the break zone, even if your opponent selects it. So it's gonna, again, like it said, it's gonna be jumping through all those hoops that a lot of the power crep cards, or the cards that are power creeping, I guess is the <laughs> uh, older cards is like doing. Uh, so this is, these are very good. Um, and two drop hate is going to be very useful still, I think, uh, with the continuous printing of very strong two drop cards. Uh, and for two water and three colors, you can put quad off into the break zone, choose a forward your opponent controls, your opponent puts it to the top of its or the bottom of its owner's deck. So uh, it's a little expensive, but it's going to sit there and it's always going to be threatening, right? Like on turns remember the basics is we start our turn if we're able to attack we attack before expending any cp right on a good day we have three backups and one in hand enough to do this so um we're able to always have this threatening piece um alive for something like that right so um now you're able to either force a damage that you don't want to run right like the the biggest problem we're having too is that like being able to put stuff to the top or the bottom means one of two things when you know the matchup you can make sure the next damage you give to your opponent is not um an ex burst right and also um sometimes you just don't want to see things right when you're counting cards uh if you if you know this is your opponent's last uh bismarck or whatever or i don't know something relevant you can send it to the bottom um because you're not worried about it anymore right or something or just yeah put it on top there's a lot of different reasons to move things around but still very good <laughs> uh but yeah so just strong card uh chemist the backups in this one are a little interesting to me but uh you draw a card uh you put chemist in the break zone draw a card if you receive the point of damage this turn draw two cards and then discard one sorry the first part is draw and discard so um yeah it's, it's pretty it's literally a standard unit and i'm not too impressed with this one but i think the other ones uh there we go uh the other ones are, are a little bit better uh kraken i love first of all i want to point out i love that they did this um i i think it's funny that it has like a flip effect but then like a fade effect oh now they're both flipping interesting all right um so flip 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 i'm gonna do this for a while <laughs> anyway um kraken so Five cost uh, chaos ex first crack when kraken attacks draw a card and then discard a card on the fifth point of damage uh, you may put you may pay one water when you do so play kraken on the field this effect will only trigger kraken is in the break zone so some might say it's very situational but you want to be okay living in this space right so we always use damage as resources um, and so this is another layer to that I don't know if this is my favorite one there's four of them uh, we're familiar with these chaos monsters or these chaos creatures, um, but they're not bad. The fact that they're EX first makes them a little more helpful, so it just, you know, we can always get that if nothing else. I do suspect these will be making appearances uh, in most decks, at least in one of them. Uh, it's just fodder, pitch fodder, or just, you know, in case any EX first count, right? Um, Kraken is my least favorite so far, so. Um, like I said, I'm not sure if I'd play him in water, but if not, at least a one of to get that fifth that fifth point of damage out if he's in there. Glaciella, the biggest, uh, the talk of the town. Uh, <laughs> uh, you can pay with crystals instead of S when paying for special abilities category of maybe characters you control. When Glaciella enters the field, gain a crystal. 
and Sunfire Burst. Uh, S, or in this case a crystal and, and water and a colorless, choose a four, deal it 2,000 damage for each character you control. Now, there's been several cards in the past that's always like forwards or backups, uh, waters or whatever, uh, forwards. This is all characters, right? So if you have two backups, two forwards, two monsters, that's potentially 12 reducing the uh, damage for each character, right? So, so Sam 6 is 12, right? We're 12,000, right? <laughs> yeah, uh, and so it's it, the damage is very, very strong early on. Uh, being able to respond to, like, even if they remove this, or they try to remove this when you get your crystal from an Amantaras or anything, you're still, you should still be able to do at least one you know, to me, you have a crystal. I don't know why you would not play this. You wouldn't play this just to get a crystal. You'd hold this. This is like a, uh, I'm going to hold this to, till I have the other stuff. If I don't have other options, sure, I'll play it by itself. But um, it's a very strong card. It just, the removal is alone is very effective, very cheap. Um, yeah. Uh, crystals have no repercussions right now. Like there's no way to take them away from anywhere. Uh, other than yourself, you use them up. Um, and with the exception of Kane, if you don't have a crystal, you give your opponent a forward. Uh, there is no actual repercussions of, like with the crystal, so um, very strong, <laughs> uncontested so far. Uh, Kurilla, I don't know if we needed another Kurilla. We don't really play the ones we do, and these don't really help. Uh, if you control water forward, then the Kurilla gains 1,000. If you control a job knight forward, other than Kurilla, so it's forward. And this kind of was talking about, right? Like if it was characters, sure, right? It would be a better, but it's not. It's forwards, which is limiting us to. You know like you know it's it's harder to get these buffs out right and they're like it's more susceptible to be losing these buffs right because if your other water forward is also a knight then she's just losing her 2000 right off the bat right um maquis the phantasm i'm gonna put it here because it's easier to read uh if the, the opponent's forwards enters the field dull we haven't had an ability like this in a long time which is i think very useful uh ffta2 if you control card name elise uh Mr. Phantasm here gets 2,000 power, and when he enters the field, choose a dual horn in your break zone. You may pay X if its cost is X. Play it onto the field. This, for a rare, um, this guy has too many effects, right? Like, these are three amazing effects. Like, the enter the field duel was from a hero effect back in the old day, I think. Hero or, uh, yeah, I think it was a hero. Uh, and then, you know, just an, an innate buff when, you have, when you're accompanied, and you can bring something from uh, the break zone into play. These effects are really strong for a three cost, uh, for a rare. I don't know, it's just me. I think this these cards, uh, the dual horns are very strong. I'm very excited to, to do more research on them. Uh, Gordon, when enters the field, draw a card and discard a card. Uh, when Gordon enters the field, you may pay one water. When you do so, draw a card. So a little ramp, sort of. He is a prince, so searchable. Uh, category two uh, might be relevant later. At the moment, it's not so much, I don't think. Uh, but yeah, Gordon, I don't know if he'll he'll squeeze into any decks. I don't think so. We have so many better options right now. Uh, Cezanne, FFBE, uh, if Cezanne is still damaged less than his power, the, the damage becomes zero instead. I feel like every set we get like a big five cost water or, you know, 9k water guy that just does nothing and takes reduced damage. Uh, it's unfortunate that this guy, I know he's like a, a basic unit in the game. Like, uh, what I mean by basic is that he's not your rainbow pool. So, I'm, you know, whatever, I'm not super impressed that he's not a bigger deal. But um, if Warrior or, you know, FFB becomes easier, like, I know FFB is going to be relevant, but if Warrior and, like, these kind of powers become helpful, sure, he might see some play. But uh, in CLT, he does very good, or limited, or whatever. Um, and the Elise, the one we just talked about, Elise, uh, Enforce enters the field dull when she, uh, she does not activate during your activate phase. If you control a card named Maquis, uh, the Elise gains 2,000. So that when they're both out, they're both at um, 9k. Uh, and when Elise Enforce attacks, your opponent selects one uh, forward they control, put it in the break zone. So, again, very good removal. The, the, the catch is getting her to attack, right? Finding a way to get an attack. Uh, and then also keeping her active, right? I think something with brave or something some way to give her brave would be useful after you've like got her upright um but also like maybe an easy way to consistently bring her active right um a strong effect strong card again paired for two of them for three c for five cp i guess you play the other guy pay two for her bring her out they're both at 9k so you have two bodies with very good effects um and then eventually you go from there 
Uh, Princess Sarah. When Princess, Princess Sarah cannot attack or block, when Princess Sarah is chosen by summons or abilities, you may draw a card. This effect will trigger only during your opponent's turn and only once per turn. So, um, I think uh, after further... At first I looked at this card and I just threw it away. But uh, after, you know, looking a little bit more... It's interesting, but I think the caveat was ruined once they added the once per turn thing, right? So, first of all... Uh, Sure, cannot attack or block, fine. But when Princess Sarah is summoned by summon or ability, you may draw a card, you may draw a card. So, doesn't say chosen by your opponents, doesn't say um, at, you know, limited or whatever. So you can effectively choose her with something uh, and draw a card, right? This will figure only trigger during your opponent's turn. So that kind of reads like the white mage that um, we saw last set, that just the infinite draw, but you can only draw on your opponent's turn. But I think this i don't know if it was changed right i assume this set was already printed or being printed or whatever so it might have read like this but they had the um the foresight i guess to make it only once per turn so um two things i see for this yes her she has a possibility to just generate you cp i mean generate you cards which might be interesting and two she kind of just sits there right so what i mean what, what's useful about that i guess is that when you're talking about cards, like, for example, if we went back to Carrillo, the one we just saw, it says for, uh, if you have a water forward or whatever, nobody's gonna target this. Nobody's gonna mess with this card. So it's just gonna sit there, in theory, and draw you cards. If you're able to, if you have something that you can regularly target with, right? Hypothetically speaking, right? Let's say I had a Bismarck on the board, and then I just ping, and I think I could target my own characters here, but uh, I'm just speculating at the moment. Um, and I just, draw a card and that's it or do it on you know I, uh, the, the only problem obviously is that it's only during my opponent's turn but still still something to think about um but realistically in my head she sits there and does nothing but draw you a card every other turn so if you're drawing technically it's another way for you to be drawing three to four cards per turn even if you're drawing that extra card during your opponent's turn so uh i don't know how much uh, she'll be used, but I can suspect that she will find her way in something. Uh, Formelda, Sword Saint. Uh, three damage, EX Burst. Uh, when Formelda enters the field, choose a forward your opponent controls, so it loses 7,000 power. And a five damage, uh, gain 1,000 power. And when Formelda attacks, choose a character your opponent controls, put it into the break zone. So two very strong, uh, one, well, yeah, very strong effects. The only problem is uh, you gotta wait till later to use her. So drawing her anytime earlier than this kind of sucks. She doesn't really do anything other than that. So, uh, in limited, very proven to be very good, but um, until we see, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth it, but there there might be better options uh, in constructed. Miranda resistance break uh, S water. Choose a four. Do three thousand damage for each card in your hand. Um, I'm always skeptical about these cards uh, with damage. With, I know water is just generally good at drawing cards and playing control decks and stuff, but she's just too She's not worth it in my opinion. Like I like her as a card, but for four for eight for this uh, it's too like It's it's not even fair, right? Like it's a little less than fair, right? Because in a bad situation I don't have enough to kill anything anyway, right? Like drawing top decking her as an as options for removal is not great so I don't want to really rely on her. So I'd rather play something else that I can rely on. So just a thought. Um, she's cool. Red Mage, I love it. FFB, we love it. And obviously with Glaciella, other ways to play it. But again, in a situation where I'm behind or I'm not doing well, I don't like, uh, you know, stuff like that. My opponent is this card and this card is like playing ice and this card is that. Minwoo. Before playing the cost to cast Minwoo, you can remove three summons each of a different element in your break zone from the game to reduce the cost of min move by three so choose an ability that is choosing a forward you control cancel its effect you can only use this ability once per turn so very strong omni negate i guess you could tell it. um i know it's just abilities and not summon so it's not technically omni but uh it's very good um i don't know how much we're not at the point where the game re revolves around like uh like that many things on the stack going on. So I think he's a very strong card. My only problem is that his first effect to make him extra unbalanced and un unfair. And remind, as a freshly reminder, we're looking for cards that are unfair, uh, is that you need to 
have him in a weird three color summon deck and with I guess Mashri and Rydia like kind of like flying away we don't really do this but in in a world where Rydia is still very relevant this guy will see his way into that deck because you could just remove you know your Amaterasu or your Mist Dragon and your Atomos and then just make him two drops and then he protects everybody for a little while longer um but yeah I think he's a great card uh, Mog 6, very interesting when Mog enters the field, draw a card, so easy. Uh, so he's pretty, he's effectively 1 CP. Uh, put Mog into your break zone during this turn, your opponent cannot search. I think this card is crazy. Um, it really just depends how often we can bring him out, or how many we play, or why we play it, right? Or if the meta revolves around more of that. This is a very unique card, I love this. I love this with stuff like... Uh, uh, the Hill Gigas that says no action abilities and stuff like that. So just a very uh, controlly version of a deck that just says no to things, and I love it. Uh, Ramada, Ramada. When, Ram when Ramada enters the field, choose a forward. Your opponent controls. Return it to its owner's hand. Uh, gain a crystal until the end of the turn. Ramada gains 2,000 power haste, and if Ramada deals damage to your opponent, it becomes two damage instead. So. Um, Comparing to uh, the other one, this is does a lot more, for, even though it's the same cost, it's a little cheaper, at least it's able to remove something, technically, put something in your hand, force my opponent to play it again, um, and then she could kind of steal games, has a lot more to do. So in a world where we, we need, we're in, in dire situations, Rom Ramada helps a lot, so. Okay, so yeah, so uh, in, a, in a good spot where, you know, or in a tight spot, Ramada is just gonna be a little more useful and I like her. Now, do I play four of her? I'm mean, sorry, three of her? No, I don't. Um, maybe one? <laughs> I don't know. I might have to play three just so in case the glassy other thing isn't always an option and her S is super easy to chill, super easy to get. So um, we'll see. We'll see if she's worth it enough if the deck itself builds, uh, leaves itself open to having this. So, uh, And lastly, the Rursan Reaver, uh, more typo standard units. When Rushan Reaver enters the field, you may pay uh, water and colors. If you do so, choose a 4 your opponent controls. It loses 5,000 power until the end of the turn. At 3 damage, gains 2,000 power. And when he attacks, choose a 4 your opponent controls. It loses 2,000 power until the end of the turn. So if it gained haste, that would be great, but it doesn't. So uh, just a weird card. Not really sure how it's useful, but maybe in sealed enough to kind of get you out of where The 5k reduction is a nice, like, it's a two drop that effectively kills another two drop because most two drops uh, that are kind of doing stuff live in that 5k realm, which is why everyone brings up the Brynhildr thing. Um, but I think all in all, uh, he just, he, I don't know if he's good enough to see play for that reason to like increase the reduction. I'd rather play Quadav, I think, right? Uh, the, the monster we saw earlier. Um, but yeah, I, I think I'd, I'd rather just play Quadav. He's cheaper and I don't have to worry about the rest of it. Um, it but yeah, so yeah, that's it for the water cards, guys. Uh, this is obviously my favorite element. I think water was really strong. Highlights are obviously Glaciella, nothing new. Uh, the dual horns are surprisingly troublesome. Uh, I suspect you will need to watch out for them. They, in my opinion, and I've said this since for I've said this for a long time now. They will probably be the equivalent of a uh, maybe not the equivalent, but the the main archetype that new players can jump in with if they're interested so the soiree sort of if you will of the set because you have all four in this in this set and you can just kind of build from there um uh standing like ovation goes to the blue mage and, and kuchu lane in my opinion and i'm excited for alpha nod uh minwu is also like not bad but you know these other ones are just so good um let me know what's your favorite card from the water set from the water stuff this time um and if you guys are excited about these as, as much as I am, um, thanks for watching and go check out the other ones, duh. <laughs>